What is going on guys? It is Weird Gaming Adventure Gospel Edition once again, and today we're doing a news episode. I know that some of you were actually uh, asking for like a news roundup for the week. Uh, I won't be talking about the changelog, but I do want to talk about something Liquid said. Liquid being one of the devs I think that originally actually created uh, uh, Conquest of Azeroth years ago and then started working with the Project Ascension team to get it to where it is now. So let's take a look at that. All right, so he says, a few people have asked for a list showing what the design intention is for each class. So I prepared one and I will post it below. It's not completely hard and fast, but it's my overall top of my head thoughts on what each class should be best, good and bad at. Okay, so he gave us this, these, these little, I guess, I don't know, he probably pulled these out of like, Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. And he gave us these these wonderful classes here. What they're best at, their strengths and their weaknesses. And I just wanted to go over them all so people get an idea. Because um, obviously I haven't played every class of 30. I am trying to play most classes of 30. We'll see if that happens or not. Um, I might just stick with classes I really enjoy. But anyways, classes best at... We'll start with Barbarian. They're best at Melee Burst, which is one of the things I definitely got them you know i got their you know i got that idea from playing it uh strengths burst damage and move speed right okay so we already knew their best at melee burst but their move speed and burst damage is up there weaknesses cc on demand mitigation and self sustain so they're probably not very good tanks uh no on demand mitigation and self sustain witch doctor is versatile support and debuffing so you know but Witch Doctor had like a had a, like a lot of buffs and dots uh, with their hexes and stuff, so they do seem pretty geared towards that. Their strengths are the consistent damage, healing, utility, and CC. That's pretty good. Weaknesses are the burst damage, consistent mobility, and damage mitigation. Yeah, so I guess some classes are very very mobile, and some classes are definitely not. <laughs> Uh, Demon Hunter, they're best at dodging. Yes, they they will dodge anything. They the, when I played Demon Hunter, they had a ton of dodge. So, yeah, can totally believe that. Their strengths are mobility. Can totally believe that. They have that little dash thing. Uh, damage, they definitely had insane damage, um, which was which was really good. Uh, evasion, we already talked about dodge. Anti mage, I actually used the word anti mage, I believe, in my Demon Hunter video. Um, because they they just clearly seem to be built as an anti magic like anti caster anti mage kind of thing and burst they definitely have a ton of burst their weaknesses are CC consistent damage mitigation and sustain I totally agree with the consistent damage having played Demon Hunter to like 2021 20, something like that they have windows of burst and when you get that burst it's like uh, it's on you know what I mean but uh, yeah witch hunter best at mobility. Yeah, they, they get mobility pretty early with their vault, and that seemed pretty strong. Um, but I haven't played it too far in, so we'll see. Uh, their strengths are mobility and snares. All right, so they're going to get some slows and some CC. Easily killable when caught, CC. So they're probably not just going to be easily killable when caught. probably going to be weak to like range classes that can put up with their damage. I imagine so, right? So like casters and stuff like that. Primalist buffing. Yeah, they did have some buffs. They had some pretty strong buffs actually in Primalist, so that was cool. Uh, their strengths are group buffs and utility, with their weaknesses being on demand mitigation, healing is weak without rage, ramp up time, and downtime. I could see how there would be ramp up time with the rage stuff. Definitely could see that. Rune Master, portal mobility slash control slash and anti mage. Yeah, I looked through the Rune Master abilities and they definitely have quite a bit of mobility. And it's pretty wild. Uh, their strengths are versatility, burst and consistent damage, burst and consistent damage, and mobility. They definitely have a lot of mobility. <laughs> Emphasis on that mobile stuff. Uh, weaknesses is they're squishy, squishy and very mana reliant. I wonder if. Um, star collar because they the best at mana sustain if they have something that would go secretize well if like you were doing like 2v2s or 3v3 arena or something like that or maybe even a bg or just in raiding or uh dungeons in general those would go together well sun cleric st healing i'm not really sure what st stands for maybe it's strength i don't think so um st healing 
Uh, that's their what they're best at. Healing, mitigation, consistent damage. Uh, that is their strengths. Uh, yeah, mitigation seems to be it. They do have some pretty good heals. And they do have some consistent damage. Their weakness, though, is burst damage. Uh, Guardian, damage mitigation. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> clearly I made a Guardian video, if y'all haven't seen that yet, and Guardian just right off the get is super strong with their damage mitigation. Uh, a lot of stuff when they, like, they get damaged when they block, they have a ton to block, it's like insane. Their strength is uh, mitigation and AoE damage, which I actually really like this. I might make, you know, I was talking about doing Necromancer as my main and Reaper as an alt. I might actually play a lot of uh, Guardian because I'm a fan of AoE damage. Uh, the weaknesses are burst damage and self-sustain. Yeah, it didn't look like they had like a whole lot of healing stuff when I was looking at their skills. Monk, fast damage. So I assume that's burst damage. Um, strengths, no, it's consistent damage. Interrupts and utility, yes. Interrupts, when you have like a, a stun that's like on a five second cooldown, yes, that's a pretty good interrupt. And they also get something like kick. Yeah, I can imagine they're very, very good at interrupting. Their weaknesses are burst mobility, healing, on-demand mitigation. Yeah, they didn't really seem to have like a whole lot of mobility from what I was looking at. They, they just had that one heal that would up their move speed by 40%. Maybe there's some other stuff in, in the uh, skill trees that I didn't see. Starcaller, mana sustain. Yeah, they definitely they definitely have to sustain their mana. I don't know if that goes off towards other people as well, but they definitely have a lot of mana sustain right off the, the get. Their strengths are versatility, damage, mana sustain, and magic damage mitigation. So probably like a more of like an anti-mage type of thing. And their weaknesses being mobility, burst, and master of none. So they're kind of a jack of all trades. I remember they had some heals in here when I played Starcaller. So maybe they, maybe they just do okay at everything. But although they did have some crazy damage, uh, maybe they're gonna nerf some of that damage with their burst being weakness. Reaper sustained. So this is what I really like about Reaper. You know, I was talking about how I liked about Reaper. Like they spend health to do damage and then have moves that regenerate their health. This is what I'm a fan of. This is why I like Reaper. And then their strengths are sustain, parry, and burst damage. They definitely had burst damage, I think, when I was looking at their skills. Uh, their weaknesses is on damage mitigation. Yeah, so I could see how Reaper would maybe be squishy. It depends, right? So maybe you take a lot of damage, but you can heal a lot of damage as well. And if that's the case, then maybe you're not like a mitigation tank, but you can heal very quickly the damage you do take, making it, you know, kind of tanky or sustainy, you might say. Chronomancer. So Chronomancer is something we haven't got to play, unfortunately. Chronomancer is a class that I'm actually really, really hyped for, but we haven't got the opportunity to play it yet. Um, it was the number one class I wanted to play right off the bat. And I don't usually play casters, but the idea of like a time mage is so cool. Anyways, they're best at utility. So I imagine maybe they'll have some buffs and some, I, I don't know, it's just crazy stuff. The strengths will be utility, support, healing, damage over time, which I think makes sense for, for a time mage. You do stuff damage over time and CC. Uh, I imagine that would be part of the utility thing. So probably some crazy buffs and some crazy CC. The weaknesses is mitigation and escape and burst. Huh. So they probably won't be very mobile. Although I kind of was thinking that a Chronomancer would be mobile, but maybe not. <clears throat> Cultist damage support. That is what they're best at. Um, their strengths are mitigation and healing, attrition, sustain, and taunting. So they do have, I remember they did have like some tanky abilities and that is pretty cool. Um, their weaknesses are burst damage and limited by insanity. So um, if their insanity hits 100, they get a fear and then they die with that fear on them. Um, then the next is Pyromancer. They've got fast casting. They're really, they, that was actually the first thing I noticed is that Pyromancer was really fast casting. They had stuff that would increase their cast speed very quickly, like level one. And their best at, or their strengths are single target magic damage and burst. And their weaknesses are consistent AOE, on demand CC, and sustain. 
Yeah, I could see that. I didn't really think. I don't think I really saw any heals for the Pyromancer. It's more of like a sit there and do damage kind of class, right? Like Black Mage in Final Fantasy fourteen or um, I guess regular Mage in WoW uh, without Blink. <laughs> Stormbringer, AOE and Magic Burst. So Stormbringer, that's what they're supposed to be best at. Range Magic Burst, AOE, off healing and versatility. Yeah, so when I was playing BGs tonight, I was been leveling my Necromancer. I was actually leveling my Necromancer before I made this video and I'm gonna keep leveling my Necromancer 30 and release a video about that. But um, I noticed that Stormbringer actually does have some healing and they were healing me with it and it was nice, it was useful. I really enjoyed that. Their weaknesses being direct mitigation, CC, and weak to kiting. So you can kite a range class. Interesting. Necromancer, this is where I shine. They're best at summoning and diseases. Uh, they definitely do get some more diseases as I've been leveling and they definitely summon like a ton. They're best at mitigation for a squishy caster, which I have not seen yet. I'm only level 20 on my Necromancer. But uh, they definitely do have some crazy summons that, if you're thinking about PvE, right? They can summon their Flesh Golem, and their Flesh Golem can taunt, and has, like, more health than any player your level, and it does a ton of damage. And so I could kind of see that as mitigation, but I did see stuff in the Necromancer skill tree that would, like, let you sacrifice minions for health. I gained a skill... Um, that lets you sacrifice a minion for protection, and so maybe as Necromancer levels up, it'll be more of a tanky caster. Um, summons, dots, I did see that they have dots, CC and disruption. I haven't really seen a whole lot of CC, but I did see one, that little ice spike that comes out of the ground in PvP that totally interrupts players that are casting. It pops them up and that counts as movement and so they stop casting. Maybe wouldn't work on, say, um, a son of Arugal who's casting uh, their spells who can move around while casting. Uh, and their weaknesses being mobility and burst damage. Son of Arugal. Bleeds. They're the best at bleeds. They have dots. Um, short lasting mitigation is their strength. Uh, consistent damage, bleeds, sustain, and mobility. They got it all, man. They do have it all in a way, but this is their weaknesses over here. It's their burst damage and has a weaker phase. Yeah, so when you're not in your werewolf form or your worgen form, you're in a weaker phase. Unless, I guess, judging from the skill tree, it looks like you could just play the son of Aragal caster. And yeah, that might, there might be something to that. Maybe you can stay in that weaker phase and become like a really sick caster. Tinker, area control, I can totally see that with Tinker with their turrets and how insane those things are. Uh, their strength is control, delayed damage, right? Because you throw the bombs and they they tick for a little bit and then they pff, explode, right? And scale with spell damage. Uh, their strengths are also mobility and utility. Now I didn't get any mobility skills when I was playing Tinker. I didn't really think they would get mobility skills. I didn't see anything in the skill tree. Not that I checked all the skills, but when I was just you know, zooming through it. I didn't see anything about mobility. And then utility, I could totally see maybe them getting a utility on in the future. Their weaknesses are on-demand burst. I can see that. CC and base mitigation. Yeah, so they could be like squishy. But because you're you're trying to control the area as a tinker, um, when you set up turrets and all that stuff, I can totally see why the, the mitigation is low because that's very, very, very strong. You don't even have to be there. I was watching Tinker set turrets and then walk across the map in a battleground, you know, like, and the turret is still functioning. So it, it is pretty wild. Uh, Knight of Zoroth, there's best at CC. I didn't play it. Um, I will play one eventually. Uh, Joshua actually played that. He made a video about Knight of Zoroth. Um, their strengths are AOE, Mitigation, Massive CC, and Inescapability. So basically, if a Knight of Zoroth gets on you, uh, the goal for these classes is that they, you can't get away from the Knight of Zoroth. He's there, and you got to deal with him. So that's good. Um, weaknesses, Low Mobility. All right, uh, that makes sense. If you're trying to, if you have someone who doesn't have mobility, and it, you know, just pull them in with the chain. Ramp up time and can be kited. Not if he gets to show you, it said can be kited. But inescapability and can be kited seem to contradict each other, but that's okay. It's probably like uh, if, if he gets on you, then you can't escape, but you can kite to a certain extent. 
Venomancer, hot and poison. Heal over time and poison. Yeah, that seems to be the my experience with him. They did have some nice heal over times, and I did enjoy Venomancer as a healer. Their strengths being versatility, healing over time, and shape-shifting. I wonder if this prevents things like uh, uh, polymorphs. <clears throat> Uh, weaknesses is their mobility, direct man, direct mitigation, burst damage, and mana limited in terms of shape shifting. Gotcha. And then finally, we've got the Ranger. Range damage, anti melee. This is the thing I actually I, I I don't know if I remember if I said it in my video or if I just thought it, but they have things where like. Ranger gets abilities that are passives that it's like any time like you parry an attack or something or, or your opponent misses or something They're just disarmed. So I was thinking immediately like Ranger could be anti-melee. This is something I also want to mess with um, They've got stealth and so I'm a huge fan of stealth classes You know some people think that's like, you know for the week, but for me, I like stealth classes I think that's really fun um, their strengths are mobility, range damage, and utility, and I believe I did talk about some of that utility through the uh, leather that they would get from creatures and then use them as buffs, craftable, craft buffs, like craft shoulders and all that other stuff, but they're actually buffs. So that's really cool. Uh, and then their, their, uh, their weaknesses are weak once caught and they're sustained, so they don't really have like a whole lot of self-healing and, you know, if you do catch them, you know, maybe a Knight of Zoroth gets on the Ranger, um, then that'll be the end of that ranger anyways that's all I wanted to say for this video um, clearly uh, this is something I actually wanted to know I figured a lot of other people wanted to know this information uh, this is something to keep in mind if you already are playing conquest of Azeroth does does these are I guess essentially what the classes are supposed to be and I guess that helps from a balance standpoint when players are giving feedback. Does this class have good mitigation? Does it have poor mitigation? Does it have high mobility? Does it have low mobility? Does this need to change? And that way you can really give feedback based on what the devs want it to be. You know what I mean? And and that would be really, really good. That way, you know, I've always thought that these classes have clear strengths and clear weaknesses. And so far, I agree with most of this list. I, I just haven't played everything to the higher levels yet. So you know i can't comment on some of it but a lot of it i do totally agree with anyways till next time peace